Certainly good to be in the house of the Lord, be a good spirit in the house so far. Praise the Lord. And uh, enjoyed last night, we, uh, Sam Robbie, when we came in, we went to a revival service last night with some of our good, uh, dear brothers, uh, singers and preachers. And there was a wonderful spirit last night, and I, I know I needed it, and it Praise got me revived and uh, anxious and excited to get here this morning. He's and I'm glad we're here this morning, gathered together. He's Amen. So we can experience the love of God. I certainly appreciate the songs that's been sung. Uh, like they started with, uh, Brother Donald, we started out with, there's Power in the Blood, and uh, Sister Joyce and Melvin, and uh, Donald, and uh, Lynn down there, amen, they got up and talked about how, or sung about how it not been, you know, if it, if it wasn't for Jesus, amen, we wouldn't have any hope. Uh, Apostle Paul says, if in this life only we have hope, of Christ, we'll be of all men most miserable. I'm glad there's hope of Christ beyond the grave. I mean, beyond this life. Amen. There's a better life of coming. Amen. There's new bodies waiting for us. Amen. There's a place uh, that He's going to prepare for us. Amen. With no more sin, no more sorrow, uh, no more saying goodbye. Thank God for that. No more heartache, no more diseases, no more COVID, no more vaccines. Amen. I'm glad for all that. Amen. And, and uh, that's the, the, the God we're going to preach on today. That's the Savior. We're going to preach on, amen. Uh, Brother Bobby's been telling me about this being Palm Sunday. Amen. I've been uh, thinking about that and thinking about some other things. And, you know, it's hard to believe that this year has gone by so fast the way it has. Uh, amen. Time just keeps rolling on. And before you know it, you blink uh, and it's the next year. Amen. Uh, uh, time waits for nobody. Amen. And we need to make sure that no matter what, we're ready to go. Uh, amen. Because any day the Lord could come and take His church out of here and we'd be gone. To, and those that are left behind and not part of the church and the body of Christ, uh, right. amen, will be left behind, amen. I'd hate to be uh, in that situation. I'd hate to be left behind uh, knowing, amen, that there'd be no hope, amen, after that, no hope, uh, amen, of being able to call heaven my home uh, because I rejected the Lord one too many times. Uh, uh, the preacher got up last night and talked about tonight might be your last time uh, to ever hear the Word of God. When you leave this place, it might be uh, you get involved in a car wreck, you get involved in an accident, uh, the Lord could take you out of here just like that. Uh, uh, they've already talked about school shooting and all these things going on. You never know uh, uh, when it could come to your doorstep, amen. So it's important uh, uh, to be ready to go, amen, before it does. Right, That's exactly right. Bless you, Turn with me, if you will, to Exodus chapter 12. The Lord put a message on my heart. He, he had me think about this earlier this week and Bless begin you, to Lord. think about Easter, begin to think about all these things going on. And uh, Amen. I'll save Easter for next week. Amen. Let Robbie maybe continue on what I've got here or amen. jump off that maybe. Uh, uh, if that's what the Lord lays on His heart. But Amen. Exodus chapter 12. We're going to read this and we'll talk about what the message is about. Um, amen. Excited today to preach the Word of God. Excited, amen, to share uh, with you the Word of God. Because you know what? I'm going to be getting it before you do. Amen. I'm going to be receiving all the good stuff, all the good points, just as you are. We're all in this together. Amen. amen. And I like when the Lord shows up. Uh, yes. Exodus yes. chapter 12, beginning at verse 1, it says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor... Next unto his house, take it according to the number of the souls of every man according to his eating shall make your count to, uh, for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, uh, and you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses, wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with the bitter herbs they shall eat it. Amen. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire, and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Amen. 
For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood... I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. That's as far as we're going to read. Uh, uh, no doubt you know what they mean. Uh, what we're talking about this morning. They have a message the Lord put on my heart. It's all about the Passover and preaching about the Passover of Amen. Because as we as we enter into Easter, what comes before Easter, what comes before the resurrection Sunday is the Lord's Passover. Amen. The Lord's Supper is actually the Passover that they was taking part in. Amen. We may get to that here in a little while. But I want you to notice a few things, amen, that's about this. When we read this in verse 4, it talked about that if a household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to this house take it according to the number of souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. I'm glad the lamb is good enough for me. It's good enough for my neighbor. Amen. It's even good enough for the whole world. Amen. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. God sent not His Son to the world to condemn him. Amen. He sent His Son to the world to die. Amen. A ransom for many. So, amen. I like the way it words it here. If the household be too little for the Lamb, let him and his neighbor partake of the same sacrifice. Amen. Jesus' sacrifice... Uh, cover the sins of the whole world. There's no more need for any sacrifice because He became uh, the Passover Lamb that we just read about. Uh, the Lamb that they were told to kill in the evening and slay it uh, and roast it with fire. Amen. The head and the loins of, and the pertinence thereof. The pertinence is the heart, the liver, the lungs, all the organs. of. Amen. Everything was to be roasted uh, and none of it was, was to be left behind. Amen. Amen. That's the Passover, amen. And that's the Passover meal, amen. They ate uh, in Exodus here, and he says he, ta- he says when you take the blood, uh, amen, you'll take it and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Now I want you to go to verse twenty-one here, and it says Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Draw out and take your lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. This is when they're about to do this, and he says you shall take a bunch of Hiss it and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses and smite you. Amen. Amen. He said, take a bunch of hyssop. You know, hyssop was at the Lord's crucifixion. Amen. When they fed him, amen, uh, gall, I believe they put it on a little hyssop thing and they held it up to his mouth. If I'm not mistaken, they put that sponge on a bunch of hyssop. Amen. He was the Passover lamb. And here we, we see and we know, amen, we would take the door. He said, You'll take it upon the lintel, which is the overhead of the door. And then he said the two side posts, uh, uh, you're going to strike it on there on every door. Uh, amen. Of Israel, they would take the blood. Uh, they would dip it and they would go house to house. Uh, and they would take the blood and they would put it in there. And the hyssop in there and they would strike the lintel. Uh, and they would strike the two side posts. Uh, amen. That was a protection. That was a guard uh, against death. Now I want you to notice something. Uh, uh, here it says in verse, let me just find it here. In verse 12, we know that I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Now, that's important. I just now got this as soon as I read that. It came into my mind. You know, everybody that's born of Adam, amen, we're firstborn into sin. Amen. Uh, Adam was the firstborn. Amen. Then we have the second Adam in 1 Corinthians 15. It talks about... A man who overcame death and who overcame uh, the sin that Adam brought into this world. So everybody in this in this room, everybody that's born in this world, is under the firstborn of Adam. Amen. And death came upon that house. Amen. And because of Adam's sin, 
death was pronounced upon all mankind. And so he was saying here, amen, that when you take this blood and you strike it upon the house, amen, death will come your way. But if the blood is applied, if I see the blood, thank God for the blood this morning. If I see the blood, I will pass over your house. Amen. And I'm glad today that the Lord, when He sees the blood of Christ, the Passover lamb for our sins, Amen. He passes over the pronounced judgment of, uh, that was applied to our soul when we became firstborn in Adam. Uh, yeah. Amen. And he, 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 he declares it to uh, sin no more. Amen. He declares it justified because of the blood. Amen. Right. Yeah. That's why Jesus said when you try to come in a different way, Amen. Through through the door. Why the door? Because that's where the blood is applied. Amen. The door has the blood on it. And if you don't go through the door that has the blood, death can still come to your house. Amen. You can't come in another way. That's how God set it up in the first place. There's no other blood that will be accepted. Amen. They can sacrifice all they want to today. Amen. Because the sacrifice of the Lamb of Christ, amen, is the only one that counts. He's the one that came to die for mankind. Never was it meant to stay that the blood of bulls and goats should take away the sin of the world. That is a type of the things to come in the New Testament. You see, the Old Testament is all about Jesus. It's all about Christ when you read of the tabernacle, when you read of the sacrifices, when you read of the ordinances, when you read of the laws. Jesus came to fulfill every bit of that. Every bit of it was fulfilled in Christ. And so no other sacrifice is worthy of God's attention, is worthy of God's right. salvation. Right. I believe it was last week, Brother Robbie preached, I think he may have hit over there in Isaiah 53, where his vision, and 52 also, where his vision was marred yeah. beyond all recognition. Yeah. Amen. The things he suffered, amen. Uh, amen. That's why he can't go through another way, because that's what the, 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 the way that the Lord had instituted amen. was this way, the way of the Passover. See, when we say, is the blood applied? Are you washed in the blood? There's power in the blood. That's what we're talking about. The blood of the Passover. Right. So, amen. When, when, he would, when the death angel was to come and take the firstborn, that's mankind. That's everybody. Because Adam was the first man right. to be born. And we're all Adam's seed. Amen. And if we don't have the blood applied, if we don't become born again, we don't step through that door which Christ is, and become a new creature, then you're still outside of the door. Amen. You're still stuck outside. Amen. Amen. Me and my wife loves to watch that movie, The Ten Commandments, with Charlton Heston, that old classic, Amen. Cecil B. DeMille. Amen. Directed it, I reckon, maybe even wrote it. But I remember seeing this picture, and it's so vivid, if you've never watched it. Yeah. Amen. They're outside, and they've struck the doorpost with the blood, and yeah. they're all inside the house, and as they're waiting... It comes time for the death angel to come. What they used was this green colored smoke. Yeah. Hey Amen. It was kind of like a fog machine and it would roll in through the, the, the highways. It would roll in through the hallways and the corridors of these villages. And if somebody was outside, of, hey Amen, it grabbed a hold of them and they would just faint dead away just like that. Why? Because they were outside of the protection of the Passover land. They were outside of the blood. They were outside of God's protection. Yes, sir, brother. Bless you, Lord. And the smoke rolled on. And when it saw the house that had the blood applied, it would be stayed from that house. I mean, you could still be inside the house, but if it was blood wasn't applied, if they forgot to put that on there, if the blood is not applied, the death angel could still get them. The destroyer, the Bible calls it. Amen. The destroyer. Amen. The devil is called a... Amen. He's walking about as a roaring lion. Said he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. I don't know if there was. Amen. I, I'm pretty sure there was a death angel there, but I, I don't doubt a bit to, that Satan wasn't there as well, ready to kill and destroy everybody that he could. Man, man. The first form. Let's go on to that for a minute. I've got some verses talking about that. Yes, in Jesus. Romans chapter, I believe it's 5. Yeah, Romans chapter 5. This is a good word, folks. I'm hoping you're getting a good meal out of this. Amen. 
I know I am. I'm feasting on it. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. What's His life? The resurrection. He died, and then He rose again. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Listen to this. Wherefore, as by one man, Adam, sin entered the world, entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Mm -hmm. Everybody, the curse is pronounced upon all men. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it was until the Passover came. Amen. Let me go down here to where it finishes the thought. In verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, that's Jesus, the free gift came upon all men under justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered... the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I mentioned earlier in 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about the Adams. <clears throat> I was reading this this morning, and I was reminded one day my dad, was in, a long time ago, he had asked me a question. I was so proud to be able to have the answer because he was a preacher And out here I was, this young Christian, newly started on the way, and he said, I I just can't find where it says the second Adam. I know it's in there, but I can't find it. And I had been reading uh, this chapter, and I don't remember how long it was that I read it, but I always, when something just sticks out at you, you want to remember. So I memorized where that was. I knew it was uh, 1 Corinthians 15. And it says here in verse uh, uh, 45, he's talking about how the resurrection is. How it's sown a corruptible body, it's raised an incorruptible body. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians 15, verse 45, it says, So it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The, as, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Mm-hmm. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Mm-hmm. As is the earthly, such are they that are also earthy. And as the heavenly, such are they that are also Heavenly. He begins to talk about the first and the last Adam here. The first Adam and the last Adam. And so that's why we see the Lord. He became the Passover. We just read in Romans, Amen. As by one man sinned into the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men. See, death passed on all men, but the Lord instituted a Passover. Mm-hmm. Amen. He passed over that sin. Death was passed and pronounced. It was a sentence that was pronounced upon mankind because of the disobedience of Adam, one man. Man. Say what you will. Amen. Eve did what she did. We we like to joke around about blaming it on the women and blaming it on Eve. Amen. Adam was the head of the household. He should have made the right decision. Amen. Amen. It was up to him to make the right spiritual decision. He's a spiritual leader of that household. And God put him in charge of all the creatures on the world and all the dominion over all of it. And he should have made the right decision. He knew better. He knew better. But sin was passed and pronounced upon all men. And God brought a second at him and he was crucified. The Bible said he was slain before the foundation of the world. Before the world was even formed, God had a plan. Yes, sir. He has already won. Amen. What the devil tried to make him lose, he'd already won. He's got everything played out. Right. Amen. Everything in this world that's going on today, we see the shootings, we see the robbings, the muggings, the killings, all this stuff. Yeah. I was reading a devotional on, or just this week, a, a book, uh, amen, that uh, was talking about some of this stuff, and it was talking about how how we get upset when the world is just all uh, scattered around and when everything just, just upsets your apple cart. And, mm-hmm. and the author was talking about how uh, she was reminded of sometimes somebody had told her about a housekeeper. These people go in and they keep houses. Sometimes 
Uh, there might be a pile of clothes over here. There might be some dishes scattered over here. And just to organize everything, it might look like a mess and a wreck. We see the world a wreck today. But the housekeeper knows what they're doing. Amen. They have to sort things out so that they can put it back together right. Amen. We see things going on in the world today, amen, because of the sin of Adam. Everything is upended. Everything is turned upside down. The world's in a wreck. It's in a mess. But God, the housekeeper, knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing. He's in charge. He's the one that instituted the Passover. Amen. Without the blood, you'll no wise enter in. If the blood is not applied to the door of the heart, this is our house now. This is the temple. This is the house, amen, that God wants the blood applied on. And when He looks upon us on Judgment Day, and when we stand before the Lord, He's going to be looking at your house, the door of your heart, and He's going to see, is the blood applied there? If He's not, the destroyer is going to get Him. Amen. Amen. Judgment will come. The destroyer is coming. Yeah. Are you ready? Is the blood applied to your heart? Mm-hmm. Now let's yeah. go to where we we realize the Passover in Christ's life. Mm-hmm. Let's go to St. Luke yeah. chapter 22. Mm-hmm. I begin to think about the Passover of the Old Testament and the Passover of the New Testament. And some of this has confused me for the longest. And so oddly bit, I still don't know it all about it. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and go to verse 1. Luke 22, 1. Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Mm-hmm. I didn't read that far, but in Exodus where he just was, if I read a little further, you talked about the feast, the feast of unleavened bread. And that happens during Passover. It says in verse 2, And the chief priests and the scribes saw how they might kill him. For they feared the people. Jesus to talk about it. Then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money, and he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. This is also called the Feast of First Fruits. Mm-hmm. The barley harvest. The Passover was the time of harvest. Mm-hmm. Right now, over in Israel, it's the time of harvest. He said, Then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare? He said unto them, Behold, when you entered into the city, there shall be a man to meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he entereth in, and you shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? He shall show you a large upper room furnished. There make ready. Mm-hmm. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready for the Passover. I'm glad what, what Jesus says, you'll always find it as he says it. I mean, it'll always be what he says. Mm-hmm. And when the hour was come, he sat down and twelve apostles with him. Now they were eating the Passover in the evening. That's when they killed the Passover in the evening. We remember after this comes the Garden of Gethsemane where it's in the evening time. So they sat down. The hour came and they sat down. The twelve apostles were with him. So Judas had come back by then. And he said to them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Mm-hmm. For I say unto you, I will not eat any more thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it amongst yourself, mm-hmm. among yourself. Mm-hmm. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Yeah. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this, this do in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. So we have the Passover. When we do communion, we've always been talking about communion lately, that represents the Passover. The meal that they had that represented, amen, the death angel coming that night and they were safe and secure under the blood. So we say, "He's take, take my body. He breaks the bread. He says, take my body. This is given for you. Then he says, take the cup. The cup is the New Testament. 
Mm-hmm. Testament also means covenant. It's a promise, the new right. covenant. Right. This cup represents the blood that was applied on the door. Amen. This is the blood, amen, that He's going to shed for the sins of many. Amen. He's not only the Passover, He's the sin sacrificial lamb amen. for sin. So this cup, it represents that. And I don't see anything about a lamb here. They may have already prepared the lamb, but it doesn't record that they ate the lamb. It just records they eat bread and they eat the fruit of the vine. Mm-hmm. So Jesus told him, He said, I'm not going to drink or eat of this Passover until the, we come in the kingdom of God. I got to think about that and that got me excited. You know, the Bible talks about a marriage supper of the lamb. Yeah, it won't be a, a day of death in that day. It won't be a Passover where the, the lamb is killed. We don't have to worry about the Lord being crucified. He's going to be the host and the servant. Amen. Both of that of that uh, supper. Amen. And when He drinks the fruit of the mind anew, it will be the fulfilling of the covenant He made with His children that the death angel would be uh, it would be no more because the blood was applied. So when He comes into His kingdom and when we're there with Him and we drink this cup, I believe we'll be reminded of this very thing that this is a fulfillment of what He's saying there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Right. Amen. So we have Jesus at the Passover. And right after this, we have Him being betrayed by Judas Iscariot. And we know what happens after that. He begins to be arrested. He's tried. He's crucified. And I'm sure Robbie will get on a lot of that next week. But the Passover is where it started. Man, yes. This Good Friday, when Good Friday gets here and everybody's off yeah. work, because I know everybody will be, most of the time, Good Friday you take the day off. Mm-hmm. It's good because of what Jesus did. He's bad. That's right. What happened to him wasn't good. It wasn't good that he got killed, but it was good that he took upon himself the sins of the world. Because the death angel was going to go and it was going to consume us. It was going to... Uh, kill all of us and he became the Passover lamb and he became the second Adam and instead of the firstborn dying the firstborn of the spirit died yeah. Jesus Christ yeah. and because of that everyone who's under the blood his blood doesn't have to pay that penalty he paid it for us that song says Jesus paid it all Amen. all yeah. to him I owe yeah. sin had left a crimson stain and he washed it White as snow. Thank you, Lord. Is the blood applied today? And if it is, notice, we read earlier in Exodus, and I'll go back to it and we'll read it again. Because this is very important. Let me go find it here. Back in Exodus, where was we at? 12. Here it is, verse 22. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin. Strike the lintel in the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. This is it is. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Until the plague be fulfilled. Until everything be gone. There was an appointed time for this to happen. There was also an appointed time for it to end. Right now we are in the appointed time. It's not ended yet. If you go outside the blood, if you go outside the door of your house, the destroyer is still out there. He's not been chained. He's not been bound. You've not been secured yet. Amen. In the fact that the destroyer is still out there. The blood still has to be applied. So if you willingly go outside that blood, then it's on your own head. That was part of the Passover. It's important that the blood is applied, but not only that, it's important we don't get outside the blood. It's important we don't get outside the protection of the blood. We don't get outside and we get out in the world and we start dabbling in the world thinking, oh, this will be alright. Nobody sees anything. Hey, Amen. Uh, he told him in Numbers, uh, I believe it's 22, 23, uh, 32, be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. God knows. I mean, you can't hide from the Lord. You say, preacher, the blood's applied, but I feel like I'm looking through the keyhole or I'm looking through the peephole or the doors will crack a little bit and I'm kind of uh, about to reach outside. Man. It's time to get serious with the Lord. Jesus was serious enough, serious enough to go to the old rugged cross and give His life a ransom for many. He came to undo what Adam did. And it's not over yet. Because we're still here on this earth. We're still here in this body. Jesus hadn't come back yet. Man. So we're subject still to the destroyer. If we don't say inside the blood. 
I feel like I've cleared my heart. I'm going to ask Brother Donald if he can come get a song. We've already had one make a move today. Give the Lord a burden. Yeah. Left it there. No doubt went away a lot more lighthearted than she was before. Amen. But this is serious things, amen. amen That's why I talked about how being serious it was in First Corinthians where he's talking about examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith before you take of the communion, before you partake amen. of the Passover. It's important we examine ourselves today. Judas didn't do any examination. He betrayed the Son of God and he hung for it. Jesus said it'd be better if he wasn't born. Yeah, that's right. We need to get serious with the Lord. Go ahead, Brother Donald. As he sings, search your heart. Examine Amen. yourself. Let's all stand. Amen. Passover's still here for you. Yes, that's Jesus. That's Lord. Christ, there he did. Thank you all for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 be saved. you got to stay inside the house. Stay inside the ship with Jesus. 